G'day guys, I'm Ryde, your Chief Espresso Officer, and today I'm gonna to go over some of your questions that you've been asking me. So I'm gonna answer a few of them, and if you like my content, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and so I can keep making these videos for everyone. But let's get into the questions. Okay, so first up, we're going to look at some questions about why your coffee might be bitter, burnt, and sour. Now, I've already done a video on this, so if you want, you can go check that out after this video. But now I'm gonna to respond to some of those specific questions from people. Okay, so first up, we've got a question from Puneet. He says, my coffee tastes sour. I use a Breville Barista Express. The extraction time is 30 seconds. Coffee starts to pour around seven seconds. The volume for a double shot is about 65 to 70 mil at times using 18 grams of coffee and the color starts to blonde a bit early, I feel. Okay, thanks Pernit. That's a great question. I think you're doing most things right. However, I feel you're extracting way too much coffee from your grinds. Ideally, you wanna be extracting about twice the amount of liquid coffee from your grinds, so two to one. So on your 18 grams, you should be extracting about 36 mil only. So getting 65 to 70 mil, way too much, which can be quite sour. So if you fine up your grind, you'll actually slow down the extraction and you'll get 30 second pour and you'll only get about 36 mil out. Okay, here's one from Katie. Katie says, why is my puck super soggy? Okay, there's a couple of reasons that your puck could be too soggy and obviously it's not the best to have a soggy puck because it means the water isn't passing through the grinds evenly and you're not extracting all of those juicy oils that you want to be that are super tasty. So let's look at the first one. The number one reason that you may be having too much water in there and not allowing enough time to get through is because your grind is too fine. So let's have a look at our machine when we run too fine a grind through and you'll see that soggy puck. Here, I've ground the coffee super fine and you can actually see it's, it's so fine it's actually clumped together, which is a good indication because the static electricity as it's grinding just forces all the coffees to attach to each other and uh, you get clumps. Now that's not always the case on some of the smaller grinders, they don't have capacity to declump it, but this is definitely gonna be too fine. And we're gonna try this. So it's really slow to come through because there's actually not enough space for the water to get through the grinds. So most of the water is sitting up here between the top of the puck and the base of the dispersion screen. It still looks like a nice shot. However, we're gonna find this is gonna cause a lot of a soggy puck. So after 51 seconds, I think we can stop it there. Have a look at that puck. Look how soggy that is. Very soggy. If it's too fine, it will also cause a soggy puck. Okay, so now the second way that you can cause a soggy puck is by not putting enough coffee in your basket to begin with. So there's just not enough coffee to extract all of those lovely oils enough for you to make your shot. As you can see here, in this basket, I've really underdosed it. Uh, it's quite low, it's actually sitting below the ridge itself and it should be level with the lip of the basket. So we're gonna go ahead and tamp that anyway. So, let's give this a shot. As it's already coming through, it's really quick. It's now splashing everywhere, <laughs> it's crazy. Look at it here, oh, and it's already over. So that was a 16 second extraction and most of that was pre-infusion anyway. So it's gonna be really super sour. And look at that puck. It's just a sloppy mess. Not very enticing at all. So if your puck looks like that, where it's there's not water sitting on top, you know that you haven't dosed enough coffee and that liquid coffee is gonna taste really, really sour. It tastes mostly like sour coffee flavored water. 
It's just tasteless and sour. Okay, so now I'm gonna teach you quickly how to get that right dosage and fineness for the nice consistent puck. So obviously you need to have it medium grind, a little bit coarser than say icing sugar, a little bit grittier. And you wanna fill it up to about that rim if you're not using precision scales. So it's a little bit heaped above there. When I settle it, it kind of fills that space. When I tamp it down, I know it's about the right amount because it should sit just below or around that ridge. And if you look closely, you can see that it is. And you get a nice, slow moving, beautiful colouring. It perfectly forms into that cone shape. And shot doesn't extract for too long, and also not too short. So around about that 30 second mark. And the puck is dry, but it's not super dry. And when you knock it out, it's a nice little hockey puck. You go play some ice hockey with that right now. But it's not too dry, that it just crumbles. Uh, it's not soggy. And that is the perfect sort of puck. Here's one from Hendra Wanto. He asks, is sour the same as dry? That's a great question, Hendra. And it's actually very slightly different. So there is a sourness, which is caused from under extracting your coffee. And that can be because your coffee is too coarse and there's not enough time allowed or enough pressure to force all of those gorgeous oils out of the coffee grinds into your cup and you end up with quite a sour flavour. There's also an astringency, which is a sourness, but it's more of a dry sourness. And that usually caused from a channel. And a channel is where you might have had a crack in your puck and the water goes down that channel and it just extracts most of the coffee from that channel rather than extracting evenly across the whole puck. And that can taste a little bit sour and dry. Of course, acidity is quite a bright and sometimes there's a citrus acidity which is almost a little bit on that sour edge. However, it's a nice feeling, it's a nice taste. So that is really important that you understand and start to get a language around all of those different flavors and which ones are desirable and which ones are not so desirable. Now, understanding the language is really important and thanks for asking that question. One from Alex here. He asks, what is the recommended brew ratio and temperature for brewing both city roasts and full city roasts? Well, great question again. Now, there's so many different names for roasts and there's so many different roast profiles. It's hard to keep up these days, but a city roast is generally a medium to light roast and I generally try to make a higher temperature for that. So I'm looking at about 95 degrees Celsius, which is 204 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you're using a full city roast, which is a little bit more towards the medium, medium roast, a little bit darker, but not too dark past the second crack, then you're looking at a little bit, you can drop the temperature back a little bit and you can go 93 degrees or 199 Fahrenheit. However, the brew ratio is still the same if you're using an espresso. You still want to aim for that two to one ratio, no matter what the roast is. It depends on specifically the coffee that you're using. You might want to tweak it to just push it up a little bit or pull it back a little bit. But it really comes down to, you know, your machine, the specific coffee, and what sort of palette and flavors you're chasing. And here's one from Nikki. She asks, what's that handle thingy without the bottom on it. I know what you're referring to. It's called a naked porter filter. And what it is, is just a regular porter filter with the base chopped off. Now you can buy these custom made, like this one here from Posado. They're pretty expensive though, and if you're quite handy, you could actually make one yourself. Although you do need a diamond saw and some way to buff it. So if you just cut across there, 
you can then buff out that and you can make yourself a nice little naked porta filter which is fantastic for seeing all of these beautiful coffee colors coming through the shops. So if you want to impress your friends at home, definitely worth getting them. However, in terms of coffee accessories, there's probably more important things to buy if you're gonna spend your money and you haven't already bought a precision tamper, a precision basket like one of these, or if you haven't bought a really nice high-end conical burr grinder, get one of those first. However, really cool. And that brings me to a general question that always gets asked, should I use pre-ground coffee or should I invest in a grinder? Now, if you're asking me, you should always invest in a grinder. In fact, I've done a video on why you should invest in a grinder. It's single-handedly the most important thing in order to get the best quality coffee out other than your actual machine. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and buy a $3,000 grinder, although if you have the money, you should definitely should consider it. There are so many good, decent grinders that are cheap enough to come by, including the Breville Smart Grinder Pro. I'm not sponsored by Breville, although they should probably hit me up. But I have to say, for about 200 Australian dollars, this grinder, if you can afford it, and most people can because it's a low, low entry, is a fantastic starting point. It's a conical grinder, so you're not using blades. It's gonna evenly distribute your coffee grinds into the porta filter, and then you can make some decent quality coffee just on your machine. So I would check it out, but there's a lot of other machines out there. There's a lot of grinders out there that are perfect, as long as you make sure that they're a conical grinder. So if you don't believe me, go watch the video and you will see for yourself side by side the difference between one day old pre-ground coffee and ground to order coffee. It's amazing the difference. So thanks everyone who asked me those questions. Well, that's it for our questions answered. So if you liked one of those ones and you wanna see a video that goes deeper into one of those questions, just vote below one through five from the questions that are asked by our users. And if you want me to really go deeper into the pre-ground versus grind on demand coffee, I can do another video on that and go even further in. We can buy a whole bunch of crap coffees that are ground, pre-ground. You can buy some of the freshest ones. We can grind some of ours here if you really want me to. Whatever you like, guys, just vote below in the comments section and I'll see if I can make a video in my next round on one of those specific questions. As always, if you liked what you learned, please subscribe, hit the bell to remind you when I put up a new video. And if you really wanna take your coffee barista skills to the next level and kick some goals, jump on my website, ultimatebaristacourse.com and learn how to become the ultimate home barista yourself. I'm Ryde, your Chief Espresso Officer. Enjoy your brew.